Hi, I'm Elisa Wood, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Microgrid Knowledge. I'm here today at Microgrid 2019 in San Diego with Sasha Fontaine. Sasha is the Director of Energy Solutions for Siemens, and he's here to talk to us about DERMS. So hello, Sasha. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. So I'm very curious. I hear the word DERMS all the time, and I'd love to hear from you. What exactly is DERMS? <laughs> Good question. I'll, I'll start off by defining the first three letters, D-E-R, as distributed energy resources. And the way Siemens classifies it, this could be renewable uh, generation, this could be battery storage, it could be a demand response, it could be electric vehicles uh, or their chargers. So really um, anything that would affect uh, an electrical grid or microgrid. Now the uh, DERMS is the DR management system. So it's really a tertiary level uh, software that's able to have visibility and operational uh, control on multiple types of, uh, of generation and, uh, and demand response. So what is the value then to a utility of having a DERMS system? So from a utility point of view, in the past, uh, they would see a microgrid as a um, loss of load. In fact, worse than that, it would be a loss of load uh, with uh, coordination problems when it wanted to reconnect, mm -hmm. in that uh, there was an opaqueness to, to that microgrid. We didn't know how much of, that, uh, of the load was hidden by generation, by local, re renewable, or other generation. So what would come back when they wanted to reconnect? Uh, with germs, you're getting visibility into the microgrid. The microgrid itself can qualify as a DER, so therefore um, the system's able to have uh, integration and visibility and control all the way down to the microgrid controller or even further down into the uh, generating asset. Huh, fascinating. Can you give me some examples of DERMS systems in action? Yes, uh, currently uh, Siemens is working with uh, Commonwealth Edison on the Bronzeville microgrid clusters which is uh, two uh, independent uh, microgrids that work together to exchange energy based on um, hourly pricing bids. And what they're doing there is that they're benefiting from the assets of uh, the other microgrids. So really, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Uh, and at the same time, they're still able to um, uh, offer benefit to the overall grid. Mm -hmm. So for Bronzeville, it's uh, a microgrid for IIT, the Illinois Institute of Technology, and uh, another one that's being built for the Bronzeville community. So benefit between those two is complementary in terms of uh, load profiles. One can be seen more as a business park where um, energy usage is during normal business hours, and the other uh, Bronzeville community can be seen as uh, residential load profile. So your peaks at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, so before work and after work. Uh, they're able to, to complement each other in that aspect, but also in their uh, energy storage uh, capabilities and in their generation capabilities. Fascinating. Definitely a cutting edge project in Chicago. Um, so that's clustering. I, I've, uh, we've written a bit of, in microgrid knowledge about a project you're working on in, in uh, Puerto Rico. And um, is that also a, a microgrid clustering project? Or what, what, is, what is the Puerto Rico project? So Puerto Rico uh, is at the planning phases, um, basically rebuilding their, uh, their infrastructure, electrical infrastructure. And uh, Siemens helped in that planning phase. And with um, PREPA, the, the local utility, they've gone with the approach of eight uh, microgrids, dividing the entire island into eight microgrids. These microgrids can act independently in the case of, uh, of the, a storm. Uh, and at the same time, yes, uh, they could be clustered in that, again, it could be a combination, any combination of uh, two to eight that would benefit from the, uh, the assets of the other one, or at the same time, uh, still support the entire grid. So uh, it would be a cluster. Eventually, it could go into a derms that would allow it to benefit the local the group of uh, a group of mm -hmm. uh, clustered microgrids or the grid itself. 
that's even more fascinating. <laughs> so we'll look forward to hearing more about that project as it evolves. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Sasha. This was very interesting. I know a lot more about germs now. Thank you.